Hello everyone, Trophy Winehunter. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm really pleased to bring you a tasting of the Giuseppe Mascarello 2010 Mont Privato. And this is something that I brought back from my spring trophy wine hunt. Really pleased to get this. Uh, as my viewers and subscribers know, for 2023 and 2024, the um, Barolo was an area of interest for me to drink and to learn more about it. In 2023, I drank a lot of different Barolos, but I thought for 2024, I needed to focus on higher end Barolos now and a little bit more age to give me a full idea of what Barolo has to offer. So I think this kind of ticks off the boxes. Uh, 2010, although it's still young, it's, it's kind of got now 14 years on the bottle, so it's got a little bit more age on it. And I don't think anyone would think that uh, Mascarella Mon Bravato is not one of the top wines in the world. It's probably in the top 10 for sure in terms of uh, experiences with uh, Barolo. Let's talk a little bit about the winery. So uh, the winery was established in uh, 1881 in Monteforte d'Alba, one of the villages of um, Barolo, although this, this vineyard is not in that region. This uh, vineyard, Mont Privato, is in the Castel Gian Valletto region. And so in, in total right now, it's about 15 acres on the southwest slope of Castel Gian Valletto. And it's chalky and gray marl soils, which this is supposed to be textbook Barolo conditions. Currently, the winery is run by Moro uh, Mascarello, and he's a fourth generation. He's been managing the vineyards or the winery since 1960. Starting from 1970, Mont Bravado has been produced. They also have a reserva, which I'm not going to talk about too much, called Ca de Mauricio, uh, which uses a clone of uh, the Nebbiolo grape called Miche. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about that too much. I don't have that bottle right now. So this bottle, again, 2010 was a very good vintage in Barolo. Uh, this uh, wine, uh, Marlboro is only produced in um, good vintages. There are vintages where it's not produced. It's the only single crew vineyard um, that Marlboro produces where it's actually numbered. The bo each bottle is numbered. So this is 5672. That's very unusual. Uh, that shows you how um, important this vineyard is to them. It's aged in a Slavonian oak for 30 months and then uh, bottled in bottled six months thereafter. So it's not really a reserva because it hasn't been aged for three years, but it does, they don't actually release it until six years after the um, vintage, which is customary with Barolo. Generally speaking, they say at that time it's ready to drink, but it drinks well for the next 25 years. And so this is a very long lived wine. So here we go with the Mont Bravado. So you can see the cork is nice and long. And that signifies, generally speaking, that that means that the, um, you know, it's meant for long-term aging. This is the Mont Bravado. Uh, so it is a registered trademark. It is a single vineyard. It's in the Castiglione Vallato region, 2010. You can see it's actually numbered, the bottle. And that's the producer. Let's see what's on the back. Not much on the back. And let's look at the color of the wine. Um, I think it looks browner on color than it is uh, in my glass. But this is useful because in a way to me, it wasn't that brown in the glass, but it looks on camera a little bit browner. Uh, it could be the lighting, but uh, I guess it does show some aging. But to me, when I'm looking at it um, just uh, live, it doesn't look as um, aged as this, but obviously there is some aging on this wine. Let's get to the tasting of this wine. I'll let you know uh, over the course of the last week or so, I've had two bottles of this wine with about six or seven different people uh, under different conditions with different food. And so uh, I think I have some familiarity now with this wine. Uh, the last night we had it with some Chinese food. The previous day we had it with uh, Western food and some cheeses. So uh, I think I've run the gambit and in my opinion, basically it doesn't really affect the taste of the wine. Any food goes with it, <laughs> quite frankly, it goes quite nicely with everything. So I have, I've had this open now overnight. I had it for dinner last night 
and uh, put it back in the fridge and now I'm reopening it today uh, again. On the smell, it's amazing. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but this is what Barolo should smell like. It's very floral, very aromatic. Uh, not a lot of fruit. Uh, there is fruit, but not that's not the underlying. It's more like ar aromas, like um, flor floral aromas. I get a little bit of herbs, but very sweet. There's all types of aromas here. Um, you could probably smell this for... Uh, many hours and not get everything. There's some caramel, there's subtle notes. And I think when people say, um, compare Barolo to Bar Bar uh, Burgundy, that's what they mean in terms of the aromatic. It's so aromatic and it's like Burgundy in that sense. Not the same aromas, not the same taste, but in terms of uh, the idea that this is uh, very aromatic and you can just smell this just like Burgundy. Oh. You don't have to drink this. This is just wonderful. And there's so many different things coming through. But I just see at this point, like last night, there's more herbs and tobacco. Now it's more like lavenders and roses and sweet flowers, lilacs. It just smells like a garden, um, a fresh spring garden. Um, there is some underlying dark fruit on this. Um, all types of things. I mean, I could go on for hours or so on the smell, but very, very pleasant. Um, not pungent, not aggressive, just very um, and very distinctive from uh, Burgundy or from um, Bordeaux. But my goodness, uh, in terms of Barolos that I've had, I don't think I've had another Barolo that has smelled as good as this. On the taste, classic Barolo. I mean, I hope everyone gets the chance, if you have the means, to taste this wine and give it some age. I, I mean, if you were buying a new one, I don't. I think it would be a little bit tannic, but this is kind of um, starting to hit its peak. I think it'll stay here for many years, but my goodness, the, the taste that come out, um, this really is classic Barolo. Herbs, dried herbs, dried plums, um, a little bit of tobacco, a little bit of leather, a bit of spice, um, red fruit. You can just go on and on. And so, but very appealing in a very Barolo-esque way. So I like this wine because it is a beautiful, balanced wine. It's got great acidity, great intensity of flavor. The tannins are... Um, refined, they are resolved, but not weak, but it is clearly distinctive from Burgundy or Bordeaux or Napa. It is not a taste that you could get uh, from an old Burgundy and Bordeaux. And that's what I love about it. This is so distinctive. Um, and I think what for me distinguishes it is the dried herbs, um, the kind of floral components to it on the nose, um, it doesn't have a lot of, uh, it's not that it doesn't have any fruit, but the fruit is underlying. It's not to the front. It takes a back seat to the herbs and the spices and the um, aromas. So if people that don't like free wines, I think you would love aged Barolos. And I know I'm going on and on about this wine, but um, it's an incredible wine. Um, I probably, I'm trying to think through my memory if there's any other Barolo I've had that I think could be better than this. I I don't think, I mean, that doesn't come to mind. There might be one, but I can't think of another Barolo that I've had that has been as impactful as this wine. So um, if I were, of course, as a beginner, I would not start out with this wine, but after you have drank for a little while in Barolo and you drank, have some experience in Barolo, I think it's important to drink this wine because, wow, you then know what the standard is for Barolo. And if you don't like this, then I don't think you like Barolo. But I love this. I love the distinctiveness. I'm going to give this uh, like 97, 98 points. I mean, it's incredible. I can't, I'm kind of a little bit speechless because I'm just trying to find a problem with this wine. It's so distinctive. And if I were to, if I were to drink Barolo, I'd drink this all day long. Uh, I can't think of another Barolo 
that I've drank that I would prefer to this wine. Oh man, this is like honestly just um, stunning. And viewers know I don't, there's very few wines that kind of make me speechless, but this is like for Barolo, this is, I'm not sure I can top this. Anyways, hope you've enjoyed this. Sorry I rambled a bit here in this video. Until next time, happy drinking.